Jack Andonoff is big. His name is way too polarizing to be lost behind the credits of the songs he produces. He has traveled through pop with extreme main character energy pitchfork rights, and main characters tend to be judged. Twice producer of the year Grammy winner does receive his share of hate. The hate even comes for his working relationships with Taylor Swift, the one that paved Andonoff's way to his stardom by letting him produce Out of the Woods for her first pop album, 1989. In 2021, in celebration of Taylor Swift winning Best Album of the Year Grammy for Folklore, their fourth album together, Jack wrote on his Instagram, You are the one who let me produce records first. Before you I just wasn't a producer according to the herbs. I just wasn't let in that room. Then I met you. We made out of the woods and you said, that's the version and that changed my life right there. Then he embarked on his first full-length collaboration, Lord's 2017 record Melodrama. Then was Swift's reputation, Lana Del Rey's NPR and soon enough Antonoff's sound became inescapable. So what do haters have against Antonoff? He is repetitive. A TikTok user suggested sending Antonoff to federal prison when they posted this video. There is absolutely the same beat used in Swift's 2022 Lavender Haze and Lord's 2017 Hard Feelings Loveless. Courtney oh, yeah. Love reposted a meme that likened Antonoff to a shopper browsing for new ideas on comically empty shelves. Andonoff's repetitiveness is his famous trait. Andonoff has a recognizable sound. His affection for the 80s, both the karaoke-ready rock of Bon Jovi and the campy roboticism of Depeche Mode, comes through in vintage gear he uses, and in his fondness for putting bold, reverberating vocals at the center of the mix. These components are on the list of signatures deconstructed by Caleb Gammon, a video producer who went viral for snarking on Midnight's production. That's him. Yep. It might not be. No, that's him. <laughs> the more he works with high-profile musicians, the more his sound spreads in our playlists. As Pitchfork summed up, the creeping sentiment online about our favorite pop star's favorite producer is that he's annoyingly, inescapably, maddeningly, everywhere. Let's go back to Midnight's where Jack produced all of the songs. Andonoff's extensive credits mean he has a hard time preventing musical ideas from bleeding into each other, says BuzzFeed and kinda has a point. The album opener Lavender Haze sounds too similar to I Think He Knows from Lover. Labyrinth hues closely to Lover's The Archer. Maroon is a more confident version of Reputation's dress. Snow on the Beach borrows heavily from Evermore's Gold Rush. And Question samples 1989 out of the woods. Needless to say, all of these songs are produced by Jack Antonoff. That repetitiveness makes some think Anonoff is stopping pop music from evolution. Swift, per se, is famous for her style evolution. She changes. Her music develops with each album and era. In Midnight's, though, she takes a massive U-turn back to reflect her previous records. But the best example of Andonoff's spiral sound is Lord Solar Power. The album has been criticized for the songs being barely distinguishable and even boring. Sometimes songs sound similar to other artists' songs. For example, people pointed out the similarities between Lana Del Rey's Andonoff produced Wild at Heart and Solar Power's Stoned at the Nail Salon. I love you lots despite the odds You're killing me, child Go dancing all over the landmines under our town. Another male producer. Interesting fact. No woman has ever won a Grammy for Producer of the Year. Linda Perry was the last female producer nominated in 2019, and before her was Lauren Christie in 2004. He's still writing Jack Antonoff songs they just happen to be sung by people like Lord Now, wrote GQ in 2018 on her second LP Melodrama, like her songs don't carry her soul in them, like they belong solely to Antonoff. Though mass market music is mainly collaborative, Taylor Swift, for example, was always considered to be the solo author. Shaky assumptions about the creative process, like the one about Lord, hold the threat of ascribing her authorship and thus success to another male producer. The stardom of Antonoff as a music producer is something new. 
for a behind-the-scenes collaborator to be so central is not usual at all. Given the headlines about how he does not want to take up space, Andonov can't help his main character energy. And that guy is known to be especially good at working with women. I write a full octave above where I sing. There's just a lot of melodic DNA that works better for women than men, he told Pitchfork in 2017. In her article for Pitchfork, writer Quinn Moreland wonders, and isn't it strange that the past two Bleachers albums have arrived roughly two weeks before that of Lords and then she goes on saying something that really got me thinking. There's something icky about aggressively presenting yourself as a man empathetic to women's emotions. Haters are wrong. Yes, there is a possibility Jack Aninoff is exploiting the fame of pop divas he works with and probably capitalizes on their success. But we mustn't forget that show business, and especially pop music, is a form of business, just like it is a form of art. Collaborations have to be simply profitable for all sides to be successful. Lana Del Rey, Lord and Taylor Swift and other stars got their share of profit out of their work relationships with Antonoff. Why is it wrong for Jack to enjoy his share of fame and recognition? Just because he is a man? It has been already said there is an excess of male producers in the industry, but I wouldn't consider Jack simply another one of them. Thing is that he establishes a new standard of relationship towards his mostly female creative partners. A 2022 New Yorker profile depicted Ann Knopf's speciality for turning hanging out into an art form. Casual banter in the studio leads to deeper conversations which bleed into jam sessions, which coalesce into tracks. The supposed point is to make musicians sound more like themselves. As Andonoff tells it, recording sessions seem to resemble a more symbiotic version of psychotherapy. When I work with other people, I'm always trying to find out, where can we go even further? He once told Pitchfork, in the second verse, can you fire out a few lines about something that happened to you when you were nine? Andonoff inspires artists to explore their own character and put it in a record. That kind of curiosity and respect for the personal struggles of a pop star is pretty rare in a Dr. Luke-dominated environment. And if you don't remember, Dr. Luke is the music producer Keisha accused of rape. It's worth mentioning that Jack Andonoff was among the first celebrities to support Keisha, offered her to work together and even called Dr. Luke a creep. The bigger Andonoff gets, and the more impact he has on the industry it's more likely to solve the reigning toxic masculinity. When being nice guy who connects to female emotions takes someone to work with the biggest names in the industry, it's worth considering putting energy in your communication skills along with songwriting. Jack Andonoff is the cure for collective Dr. Luke. Reviewing St. Vincent's album for Stereogum, Gabriella Tully Claymore wrote that Andonoff has proven himself to be very good at working with women who have a strong point of view, who will always sound like themselves regardless of who's assisting them. Andonoff has built his career on being a friend. He's the kind of man people feel okay sharing their feelings with. And even an accusation of repetitiveness can be seen in the realm of sexism. Critics easily picked up on the ultimate male creator that makes pop girlies sound the same. First of all, if Lana Del Rey sounds like Lord at some point, it is because she simply chooses to. It's not like she received ready-made songs she has to sing. We mustn't forget, Taylor Swift, Lana Del Rey, Lord, and St. Vincent were all established songwriters before they started working with Jack. And before speaking of repetitiveness, compared to classic albums he almost entirely produced and co-wrote, Lana Del Rey's Norman Fucking Rockwell, in 2019 and Lord's Melodrama in 2017. Del Rey's album channeled Baby Boomer Rock into a 21st century masterpiece. Melodrama, by contrast, was a futuristic cityscape rendered in synth pop. Though hugely different, the albums both contain some of the best pop songs of the past decade. Let's not forget Andonoff produced Taylor Swift's August, Mirrorball, and Gold Rush rank among her greatest and most distinctive tracks ever. Andonoff's style is a sharp change from the dynamic that has governed the last decade of pop hit making, which has been largely defined by the so-called track and hook method favored by producers like Max Martin and Dr. Luke. A track is almost a canvas with some background painted into it, Billboard noted in 2015, describing this method, and different people add hooks and a bridge and a chorus and slowly it becomes a song. Track and hook production is more concerned with chart-tested formulas than the messy variability of human emotions. Also, it's hierarchical and decidedly male.
The track and hook method makes the producer the undisputed king of the song-making process, writes John Seabrook in The Song Machine, Inside the Hit Factory. By putting artists' emotions in the center of the creative process, Aninoff lets his collaborators take the lead. If anything else, the world has to be grateful to Jack Aninoff for putting end to track and hook method.